Hey everybody, thank you for checking out my review for this Didiato 13.3 inch flip down car monitor. I'm super stoked about this. Uh, and this is gonna be kind of a dual purpose review um, slash tutorial, cause I'm gonna show you how to install this in the car. Um, but I'm also gonna show you my plan, which is to run a mini PC that runs Kodi. I'm gonna connect that in because this has an HDMI port. So uh, I'm gonna hardwire this, this computer into the car cause it runs on 12 volts. So it's pretty, pretty simple to hardwire it in um, and then kind of show you everything together. The reason I wanted to do that is because I ripped all of my DVDs onto a hard drive. So I can put a massive amount of DVDs on just a two and a half inch hard drive that's, sell, that's powered by the USB. So it won't, I won't have to wire in any external power for that and have a ton of DVDs for our long road trip that's coming up. So um, it'll kind of be serving both of those purposes. The first thing that you're, you're gonna have to do before installing is to kind of take a look at what's going on in your car. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring you out to my car. I'm gonna show you uh, what I ran into, some of my thoughts as far as fixing the problems um, and wiring it in. As far as the wiring goes though, this is a really simple uh, monitor, monitor to install. If you're replacing this, if you're upgrading um, an old monitor, this, this would be cake because everything's already wired, but I'm going to show you scratch install. So um, just to show you what it has, it's got two different, it's got two, two different sets of AV inputs. So if you have a DVD player mounted up front, you can just plug it right into there. And then the actual wiring is crazy easy. All it is, you have a positive, you have an accessory, and you have a ground. So this will go to anything, the, the black will go to any part that's metal on your car. This goes to a 12 volt constant lead, which will probably be um, directly into the battery. And then this goes to an accessory lead. So this can, you can tap into any wire that has an accessory. Um, and there's a few different ways to do that. What I think I'm going to do, um, because we're not gonna use this frequently, I think I'm going to actually wire this part into a switch so that I can manually turn this on and off from the front seat. Uh, Cause I have small children who, aren't very good at running it from the back seat. So um, I think that's the way that I'm gonna do it, but I'll show you the right, I'll show you the way it's intended, and then I'll, then I'll show you the way that I did it. So um, I'm just, like I said, I was, I was bench testing it here. So basically all I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, this is just a 12 volt lead. So that's a 12 volt positive. This is a 12 volt negative, which is the, the, the ground, simulating the ground, and then this is the accessory. So the idea is when you turn the car on, you get power to an accessory um, and that will power it up. So you can see that's actually a very strong magnet that holds that closed. It's not gonna co collapse on you. It's not gonna fall down on you when, you're, uh, when you don't want it to. So basically now I'm just connecting the accessory into the 12 volt here. And so that acts as if, um, well I guess I should, I did that into the negative, but that acts as if the car is turned on. And so the accessory turns off when the car is cranking and that get, gives all the power to the starter. And so that you don't want anything else running while your car is cranking. So now it's powered on. We can hit the remote and just turn it on. So now it's, it's up and running. I do want to say while it's, while it's booting up, um, this la last one here is to, so now you can see it's, it's running there. But this blue one is to tap into your door lights. If you're replacing, if, if, if your door lights are in the center where, where this is going to cover, um, they made it so that you, you don't have to completely eliminate your, your overhead, your dome lights. Um, you can use this. So basically all you do is you tap this blue wire into a dome light. I'll show you how to do that too. Uh, when you do that, you can see it gives you two nice bright dome lights. There is plastic here, there is plastic on the screen. I'm gonna leave it on until it's installed. Um, it comes pre-installed with some software that actually will run uh, movies and music right from a, uh, a USB port on the side um, or an SD card right there. So you can see you, you have a ton of options. Um, and really I probably could just plug my hard drive right into there and run movies. I want to run Cody too, but I also want to run some, some game emulators so that we can play some games in the car too, because why not? Um, so, all right, what else comes in the box? It comes with some, some mounting screws. These will probably be too long for my application. I'm going to have to probably make something custom, and I'll show you that as I go along. Um, it comes with the instructions. It comes with the remote control. Um, and then it comes with these little rubber pieces here. So this rubber piece, these actually will just 
go over once once everything's installed they just cap off like that and so then you don't see any of the screw holes it looks nice and clean so the first thing that you're going to do um, is actually pull these screws out because we want to get this mounting bracket off the back side because you mount the mounting bracket and then you mount the DVD player, or sorry, the, the monitor to the mounting, mounting bracket. So then the mounting bracket just comes freely off. So you can use these holes, any of these holes here, you can slide those screws from, so, or through. So you have a lot of options as far as, as, far as mounting goes, because um, they give you a lot, a lot of space to, to mount it exactly where you need to go. So now with that done, let's go ahead and get out to the car um, and I'm going to show you how to lay this out and how to actually install it. It seems a little nerve wracking because you're cutting into a headliner, um, but it's not bad. It's really not too bad. So let's go ahead and get this done. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is kind of get an idea of where we want to mount it. You can see that that's that I have a sunroof, so that's probably where my main access point is going to be. If you don't have a sunroof, um, you'll have to use your weather or pull your weather stripping away right here so all you do is just slide this down and to put it back at the end you just line up your line up your groove right here and just pop it in place um, so let's go ahead and get a look here looks like we have a side curtain airbag that's going to get in our way um, if you really have to you can actually pull your dome light down uh, which we're going to have to do to tap into it anyway um, and also those the uh, handles over there can come off as well. And this whole sun, our whole headliner can come down, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to look through the sunroof and we're going to so see what all we all headliners are basically held up by, by Velcro. So the, the dome lights and the handles will hold them in, but uh, it also is held up by Velcro. So you just pull down um, and you can see these are the little Velcro snaps. So this is what I'm working with. This is the one cross beam that I have. So my plan is to try to put a screw up right through this rivet or sorry, this little uh, ridge right here to see if that will uh, if that'll give me enough clearance because this slides back and you can see it doesn't really leave me much room to uh, to do anything. So I'm gonna try to put it up through there. If, if I don't get that to work, uh, I'm gonna actually use some neodymium magnets, the 80 pound pole neodymium magnets and magnet those right up to this metal and then through the sunroof and into the bracket. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is we got to start out by laying it out. We want it to be centered between there um, and also just noticed be real careful when you're pulling it down because I think I did some damage to mine because I was getting a little overzealous so be real careful don't pull it too much because um, these are very expensive to replace these headliners and um, so we're going to measure side to side, front and back, and make sure that we get the um, bracket lined up exactly where we want it. I do also want to point out that down here, this, these are this, the side panels, and they basically just slide off on most cars. If you have any questions about how it, how it works, let me get you to where you can see. Um, you can always YouTube how to pull your, your panels off your... Um, cars the, these center column panels normally just pull yeah so that's gonna pull and yeah that just pulls off right like that all right let me show you how to get the bottom out off. when uh, when I pulled this center column out a little bit but basically it's the same idea for these you just pull this out we're gonna just set these outside someplace where you uh, aren't gonna hurt them because we're gonna run wires right along here right next to this existing uh, wire harness. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these out all the way. So basically what I did is I just eyeballed it. I set this frame up here. Sorry, that's a le I have leather chairs. Don't judge me. All right. <laughs> um, so I set the frame up here. I, I kind of eyeballed it. Then I measured to double check. And then I just used a pencil. You can see that's just a, a really small pencil mark because if you make the wrong mark, um, then you can get rid of it, but my headliner clearly it's very dirty anyway because uh, I have kids Which is the whole reason for the DVD player, but anyway um, small pencil mark will line up So this this is side to side it's laid out right front and back is more going to depend on uh, Where that bar that's under here lies so uh, that's the next step is to get that mounted I'm going to drill some holes. Um, I'll show you how I do that I'm going to get it set up there and then I'm going to show you how um, how I do it because you want to poke a hole um, 
through the headliner before if you can, um, just to help prevent pulling and tearing on the uh, fabric. So I'll be back with you in a second. All right, so you can see I have the first one mounted in in there, and it actually the screw was perfect as long as I hit the ridges. Um, you can I can check and still see, make sure that that's working. Um, so I want to show you how to, to uh, do the second one. So after I've done this, I make sure that front and back is level, okay, or is even, because um, this is going to be kind of the one that fixes it in place. I'm going to try to aim a little bit. This screw I put on the side, so I'm gonna put this one on the other side here. And I'm using this as just a, a pick to kind of start the hole so I don't tear the fabric and, and pull threads through. So there's the, the hole. So now the next thing that I have to do is take a drill and just drill through. It's a little bit difficult in a small car. Big SUVs, this is a lot easier. So I'm gonna just Obviously make sure the sunroof is closed so that when you go through you don't hit glass and break it. I'm just going to pop through. There we go. Alright, so that's through the middle. Switch out my bit here. We're going to pop a screw right into there. If you don't have a sunroof, this gets a lot easier. So let me get a screw. I'm going to put a screw right through there, through the hole we made, and just drive it all on up into the metal. Alright, and you can see that is quite secure actually, um, but I do need to put some in the front. So the front, I'm, I'm going to try, this is a very lightweight unit, um, so the best, you don't want to just go right into the cardboard of your um, headliner. It's best to have a piece of wood or something here. I don't think I have the clearance for that. So I'm going to try it with just the support on the headliner um, and see if that gives me enough. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to figure something else out. But for your, for your purposes, I definitely don't recommend just going into the headliner um, because you need more support than that. But I'm going to give, give it a shot. So do as I say, not as I do. I'll be right back with you. All right, so uh, that didn't work obviously. So what I ended up doing, the, I only have room for this little piece of hardboard right there. I don't have room for a thicker piece because uh, the sunroof won't open. So I'm going to put that piece of hardboard and what it'll do is it will one, hold the screws in place so they don't pull through because it's just cardboard and fabric. Um, and two, it'll spread the weight distribution. It'll kind of distribute it along the, the whole length of the cardboard, hopefully not at a single point and it should in theory, uh, still be strong enough to hold it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is um, this is directional. See this little, that little piece there? It needs to be lined up on this side um, because, let me get the monitor real fast, that piece is designed for those wires. So that little grommet slides in. I'll show you that when I'm installing the last part of it, uh, but just make sure that it's lined up uh, correctly before you drill your holes. You might end up having to re-drill. Um, it worked out okay for me. I didn't have to re-drill. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the wire or the hole for the wires and start getting some wires run. All right, so I just want to show you something that will make your life infinitely easier. It's these little mini fuse adapters here. They're, the, they're called tap adapters, I believe. Um, but basically all you do is it just takes the place of, of a fuse and then you can wire in. So you get two of them, one for accessories and one for power. And you can plug one in for, into the yellow wire, one into the red wire. Um, and all you do is look in your... Um, User manual, you can even find these online. You're gonna look for a couple that spare or not used. Um, and so, and then all you do is plug right into that and you're good to go. If you don't use these, you actually have to find a wire um, that is a 12 volt that's accessories and 12 volt that's constant. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to wire into the battery as your constant. Um, but then I'm going to go ahead and use this for my accessories because I don't feel like trying to sort through and figure out an accessory wire. Um, and it's will be different on your car anyway. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, I've run the wires, at least some of them. Basically, I ran them through here. 
Um, I tuck the wires up through. You can see it doesn't require a big hole. You just have to tuck them through one at a time. Then I ran them down this way. Um, and then down, I had to take this panel off. I ran them down this center column here. Um, and then it's gonna run all the way to the front. So I'm gonna tuck these in, probably zip tie them here uh, just to clean things up a little bit. But I'll, I just have to run three wires. I decided not to wire into the doors and that's just because the lights for this, it's, it's only three inches away from my door lights using anyway, the, it's not replaced. All right, so I'm using all the same color wire just because I have a bunch of it. It's a lot easier if you don't. So I'm going ahead and wiring stuff in as I go just so that I don't get the wires confused. So this is the ground. Ground just has to go to anywhere metal on the car. Um, so basically what it, I did is I just attached um, one of these little connectors here, these little terminals, it's a circle one. Drill the hole just like I did to mount, use the exact same screws that I used to mount and just went through. Um, I sanded, you can see I sanded the paint away because you want a really good connection. So sand that paint away, you can connect it anywhere um, that you can actually find metal. So that should work, uh, we'll test it before I, I actually connect everything, um, but it should work just fine as long as this it's sanded and it's metal on metal, which is what it is. Um, so now let's go ahead and connect in the power. I actually find um, a good place to run the wire through the firewall. So I'm going to use another one of those um, little fuse tap connectors that I showed you. Um, but I did want to show you that the way that you're going to connect it into the power here is you'll find some different terminals coming off. You, I would use this one here. You attach one of these little terminals like this, loosen this bolt up, slide it right underneath, and then tighten it down. Um, and that'll give you a constant 12 volt source. All right, so it's really hard to show you under here, but uh, this is how you tap in using one of these taps. You just push it in to one of the empty spots that you found in your user manual. Then you have this power cord coming out and you can use a wire nut like I'm gonna show you um, to wire in the, the rest of it. You can, you can cut that and use a wire nut or use an adapter to actually just plug right into it. But I wanted to show you how easy that is um, because you can use, well, let's focus. There you go. Um, because you can, you can find one that has a constant 12 volt source and one that has an accessories. And then you don't have to cut any other wires like in your car. You can just plug right into your fuse block and it's fused, which is awesome. The uh, DVD player itself is fused as well, um, but it's nice to have some extra ones. So these were really, really inexpensive and will cut down on your install time by a ton because you don't have to search for wires or cut wires and splice them. So just wanted to show you that's how easy it is to plug that in. All right, so this is totally extra. I wanted to be able to, to watch uh, movies with the car off completely, um, not have to have the key in the car. And it's not designed to do that because you can kill your battery and it's not really a great idea, but I want to do it anyway. Um, so basically I just soldered and heat shrunk this, this switch in. So basically what it's gonna do is run a 12 volt into this switch that's got constant power. So you can connect in straight to the battery or whatever, however you want to get that power. Um, then I'm going to connect the accessories to the output on this switch. So when you flip the switch, it turns the accessory on. That means that the screen won't turn on automatically when you turn the car on, um, and you can use it when it's off. You just have to remember to turn the, the thing off, off and on. Third wire's for a ground, and that's to make sure that the, the light turns on so I know when it's on. Um, the other thing that this is going to do is I'm gonna use that same power source to power the computer a little bit later on. So again, 12 volt in, um, accessory and the power wire for the computer out. So that's how that's going to be wired. So the next thing we're going to do is um, finish up the wiring up top um, and so I'll be right, right with you. So I am more of a solder and heat shrink type of guy but I really didn't want to deal with that so I just use these wire nuts and I really like wire nuts. They're super easy so all you do is twist these wires together. I'm going to try to do it one-handed. Um, and then you're just gonna slide this on. Oops, I need a blue one, but you just slide this on and then twist it. And then you use a little piece of tape to just uh, tape it and make it a little bit more secure. But all you do again, you just slide the wire nut on and twist it and it will secure these things pretty set. darn so good. So we have power, we have ground. Again, I'm not gonna connect into the door cause it's like two inches away from that one. Um, and then, I wanted to show you here a couple of things. One, I zip tie these out of the way to keep them up. But two, if you have these, you really need to make sure that you don't run the wires in top because they blast down. 
um, in an accident and it won't work. So what I did is just went underneath the brace that's right in between the front and the back side curtain air bounce bags. So make sure you don't tie those up with your wires. All right, so I have the wires run down um, and now I got, sorry, excuse the air, it's really hot in here. Um, so these three screws right here, I put into that piece of wood um, and you can see it's a lot more secure now. We're not gonna have any problems with that, especially once the two, the, the screws up top go in. Um, we're good. So the one thing left I have to do is run the HDMI cable out. Um, I went ahead and ran it up the exact same way that I did before, trying to decide how, how and where I want to pull it out. It may have to come out on this side um, and kind of be like this, um, and then have the wire run up through. Uh, but I, I'm trying to avoid that if I can because I don't really want to have this much wire So um, I'm gonna play around with some ideas and I'll be back with you when I get it figured out All right, so this is the solution that I'm gonna run with this is I got these uh, I have these 90 degree HDMI adapters because I think that looks cleaner than having a cable sticking out this way and then a wire uh, the problem is is that when you use it like that, it's going to stick straight up like this and I just don't have the clearance. So I'm going to use another adapter like this and it's going to angle it that way but be a little bit flatter. So that's the plan. Um, so I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to just cut out right here in this little spot, slide this down inside and then attach the cable this way so that it's running more horizontal. Alright, so my idea worked. It's a very clean install, doesn't really have a lot of uh, mess on it and you can see it's working awesome. So I just plug the computer in. I haven't hardwired hardwired that in yet I'm just working on making sure that everything is situated um, also there's There's plenty of room for that so looks like the proof of concept works So now it's just a matter of uh, buttoning everything right, so down. There we have it. It is installed and it's ready to go Sorry, I couldn't show you this because uh, it took two hands and then somebody else to help as well like actually screwing it in but it was just the same way that I, I showed you earlier that's the reason I showed you with these little screws into the mounting bracket um, so that's the HDMI connector uh, it seemed to work really good there's a little bit of a bulge right here with all of my wires um, at some point I'll probably go fix that and clean it up a little bit I'm just it's hot today so um, but you can see that it's working great the let me focus here see if it'll focus it's having a hard time focusing, uh, but the video quality on this is incredible. It's running through HDMI, so it's really, really nice um, quality, and everything runs really good so far. Um, so all I have left really to do is hardwire the, the computer and then button everything back up. So um, the install of the monitor is complete. For those of you who are only caring about the monitor, this is everything working. It is an amazing monitor. Uh, the the quality is awesome. It doesn't weigh very much. So even in an installation like this, you can see it is just nice and, and secure. Uh, it's snug up against the, there it is. It's snug up against the headliner so it doesn't look bad. Um, the last thing I guess we can pull that off. And uh, let's go ahead and pull the screen off. We'll just do that together. I think you guys are going to be really, really pleased with this monitor. Well. It takes two hands apparently. <laughs> um, I think you guys are going to be very very pleased with this monitor. It is it's excellent quality. It's really easy to install. It didn't take that long. Um, I was kind of finicking around with you know trying to figure stuff like this out and and adding switches and stuff but still it wasn't it, it should probably take a uh, cold install from nothing maybe two to three hours uh, at the very most. If you're using this to replace an upgrade, it probably is maybe an hour at the very most to upgrade um, your existing monitor to one like this. I highly recommend it. I think that you're going to be really happy with it. The quality is good. It's lightweight. It's got a lot of inputs, AV1 and 2, HDMI, USB, um, and also the SD card there on the side. Um, so it can literally run anything that you want it to. Um, and for the price, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. So I'm definitely giving this monitor five stars. If you guys are interested in seeing the rest of the install for the, the computer so you can see it's running Cody, um, then you can stick with me and we'll tag that on to right, the end. So this is the side panel. I ran out of space. My original plan with the HDMI was to run it down underneath and then back up so I didn't have to drill, but uh, I ended up 
uh, not planning very well. So I had to uh, drill through here. Uh, that's okay because I'm going to run them underneath and I'm going to uh, cover it with a mounting bracket. But I just wanted to show you this is the power cable. Um, basically what I did, I showed you the ones that you can use if you don't want to solder. Um, I just ended up soldering like that. I just cut the, the original and soldered it in just like this. You can also buy three and a half inch 12, uh, 12 volt um, tap converters. I think that's what they're called. But it's the mini fuse. It's basically a mini fuse like I showed you to tap in for the other one and only it ends in a three and a half inch like this. So it's just a three or you can use a power inverter whatever you want to do to get power to it. I just decided to run that um, and then I ran it up to that same switch right there. And so now we have power. I've tested it. The power works. The HDMI works. So now I'm just going to put this panel back on and actually do the, the mount for the computer itself. All right, so all I did was mount this. This came with the PC, so four holes, just a little bit in there, right underneath or right above that um, hole for the HDMI. I'm gonna just slide this in place here. So it slides down, uh, and I don't know if I can do this one-handed, because I can't really feel what I'm doing, but, okay, there's the HDMI cable. Here's the power cable. I think it's right there. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's on this side. I don't know. Give me a sec. I'm going to plug the power cable in. All right. So you can see we have power. You can tuck those back in however you want. That slides. There's plenty of room behind the car. If you have kids, you know what this is. Um, and you can see that it's booting up. It did sync with uh, the Bluetooth in the in the car. I'm yet to test it though, so I'm going to give that a test here in a second. But I just want to make sure that this boots up okay, and it should actually um, automatically start, and then it should boot right into Cody as well. Um, there's a there's a free program that I think it's called like Cody Boot or something. Uh, I'll put it in in my description as well because I'm not 100% sure what it is. Um, so this should come up here in just a second let's see if it works it was working previously but it normally takes about I don't know 20 30 seconds after it boots to run the program so um, I'm going to pause and when it starts up I'll be right back with you that was about a second and a half after I just stopped moving. So it, it did boot all, all by itself, so that works. I have my Bluetooth keyboard in here. Um, so it looks like it's everything is working, so the next thing I'm going to do is plug in my hard drive, and uh, let's try this baby out. All right, so everything's wired in, working beautifully, um, but I realized I didn't show you all the features of this, this monitor, which is awesome. This, this monitor is amazing. It, it's just such a good looking monitor. I wish I would have uh, got the tan. Uh, I was just impatient and the tan took longer to ship. So, But anyway, I do want to point out that you can click this button and it turns the lights on even though I did not wire them in to the door. They just don't automatically turn on to the door because I have those lights right there. When you open the door, those turn on. Um, so this is your menu button. This is to change your source. These are your select buttons and also your play. Um, so what I'm going to do is hit the menu button and run you through the menu real fast. So that's volume. You can change the volume by hitting these ones up and down. And if it'll focus. Has a, has a, a struggle focusing on this one. Um, Alright, and we're going to hit the menu again. Brightness, contrast, color, aspect ratio, FM mode. So to change this, um, you just are going to hit these buttons up and down. Just don't wait that long. <laughs> All right, so um, you can change. So that that obviously turned it off. I have it set to 107.9. Um, that's 107.5. You can change that. I'm not going to do that because it's really loud and annoying. Um, but it does work really good. So let me show you. I'm going to push play real fast here. It's a really strong FM transmitter. Let me get centered so it doesn't look all crazy. So it definitely has it has great sound. All right, let me stop that. 
Um, so the sound is awesome on that. It also does have two speakers here. If you turn that off, it plays through the speakers, which is actually kind of nice because um, you can adjust it to the kids. Um, I'm gonna keep going through the menu real fast. Color, aspect ratio, FM mode, IR mode. So this is cool. You can turn that on um, and you can actually transmit to infrared um, headphones. So you can just plug in or have some IR headphones and have the kids get some wireless headphones. Um, sleep timer and then your HDMI settings and your reset. Um, so all of that is awesome. You heard that it sounds great. And I will try to, to get my computer to run in uh, with the Bluetooth through the stereo, but honestly, the transmitter is strong enough that it, it's not annoying to uh, it's not annoying to have it run through the transmitter, and it's a lot easier than trying to get it to work that way. Um, so the last thing I want to do is I'm going to plug in a USB uh, and show you that it works through the USB to play. All this. right, sorry, it's getting a little bit dark, but all I'm going to do is plug this USB. Uh, flash drive right here into the side. If I get the right direction, there it is. Alright, so plug it in. It automatically changes uh, and brings up that. And since I only have one video on here, it looks like it's going to automatically play. That is awesome. While it's loading, I want to show you something else that's pretty cool. Look at the angle that you can get on that screen so for your younger kids if there's a glare or if they're aiming down um, you can actually really adjust it's got a great angle it doesn't have to be straight up and down like a lot of them that I've seen um, it, it looks like it's playing awesome I mean honestly my video of this monitor does not do it justice as far as the uh, video quality it is incredible let me I'm gonna pause this now so I can kind of wrap up um, so again I'm absolutely I absolutely love this monitor I think you guys are gonna be super super pleased with it, it has every single input you could possibly imagine um, it's got the extras like these these lights that are super bright um, it's also extremely thin it's very lightweight so it's easy to install it's very thin so it's unobtrusive even in a small car like this uh, which you know putting a giant screen in like this is maybe a little bit overkill according to my wife um, but it's a nice it's a nice big screen easy to see it'll be easy to play games on it'll be easy to watch movies on the, the FM transmitter is great like I really can't say enough you guys are gonna be super pleased with this monitor so again I give this thing a solid five stars pick one up you're gonna be happy with it